Hey folks, Rich here. Uh, so 2019, I finally made my first uh, rocket mass heater and uh, set it up here in the pole barn. As you see, it's just a pole barn. Um, so there was no insulation or anything like that going on. And when I decided to build, I knew I had needed insulation. Despite the efficiency of the uh, rocket mass heater, it still needs to be in an insulated building. So. This is a weird uh, building. It's got a, this is a 12 sided room. So what I did is I uh, sectioned uh, off this and um, you'll see in a second there that it's all built out, but right still behind a, a visqueen wall and a uninsulated ceiling. So that's coming for next heating season. Um, but I was stoked to get the, uh, the mass heater built. So uh, we made this tongue and groove pine, knotty pine, which uh, there are, Turns out from a rough sawn board to a tongue and groove is many steps. Um, but this is really uh, highly insulated in here. And I've got a R40 on these walls and just a R10 on the roof uh, ceiling so far. Um, but we're gonna do some blown insulation up there, get a R50 or better. Um, and then of course, here's the heater. Um, I did an L, L shape. Or I guess this is more like a J actually when you see it protruding like that. Um, but your typical J tube um, from the Rocket Mass Hill Builder's Guide from Ernie and Erica Wisner. And there it is going. Um, it's mid April, getting into be late April. So these are some of the final burns of the season. But it's done amazing. Um, got it going in mid February or so. And I've been burning it almost pretty much daily since. I've gone out of town a few times. Um, but I filled it with uh, slabs of um, granite and sandstone and marble. Um, those are my monolithic pieces. Um, but they're all throughout uh, the mass and then filled in with pea gravel. I'd hope for cob, but you know, you work with what you got access to. Um, so the pea gravel works pretty well. And then um, all these are uh, reclaimed bricks down here. Uh, it took me about a year and a half to get enough bricks uh, to do this whole thing. Um, but uh, going great. Super awesome performance. I did the annual clean yesterday. I didn't take any pictures or do any documentation. But it took uh, about 45 minutes to take the barrel off and uh, clean up mostly just uh, some fly ash from the... Uh, uh, down low in the barrel and on the lip uh, the way you designed it to catch all of that and I was really surprised uh, there's no black soot it was very brown burned up looking kind of stuff that came out of there so that was impressive and cool and um, uh, what I expected you know everything about this so far has been uh, as expected um, one of my design flaws I believe is that's in this corner here, you know, I do the L shape. Um, I've got my clean out here, but it's my thought that a bunch of fly ash is being deposited on that first uh, turn. So in building it, I think I should have uh, put my clean out here, uh, over here. And that would have allowed for me to, to reach that uh, corner uh, pretty well. So who knows what's going on in there. And, um, you could do two cleanouts down at this end, I guess. That would be a little harder for your uh, mortar work. Um, my first time doing mortar, and it, it worked out all right. So it's exposed like this because I plan to add a, a two-inch thick concrete countertop, um, which will um, cap it off. And I'll put some temperature sensors in there. And you'll see back here, I've got an Arduino running. Um, and that's hooked up to a thermal couple, high temperature sensor which I have located here at the top of the burn, uh, the riser tube. So that then pukes it up over here to another Arduino, which uh, displays the readout and such. Very poorly on the, the phone here. But uh, then that goes up to the web. Let's see if I can get it quickly here. Probably not. Um, it's been crashing today. Uh, going up to the web and then I can monitor um, what's going on with the heat and so on. Um, but that goes up to the web and what I'm going to do with my concrete countertops is embed three temperature sensors You know one here one in the there and then one here and That'll allow me to see how much coast time I have so 
you know, when there's no fire, how long will this mass uh, hold that heat? Um, you see, I got my bedroll out there, and the bedroll, you know, <laughs> I'm sleeping on a, a pea gravel and marble and so on, and it's, it's you know, it feels like it. <laughs> uh, it took a little while to get used to it, but uh, my body is adapted, and uh, it's, I have no complaints, really. Um, we'll see how it feels with the concrete countertop, but right now it's like, you know, eight or nine different blankets and sleeping bags and comforters and so on. Uh, that works out pretty well. But uh, yeah, there's my rocket mass heater. Um, super happy with it through and through. Um, but like most rocket mass builders, uh, heater builders, we um, feel the need to build a batch box. So like most J tubes, I get about a 40 to 60 minute burn out of a load. And uh, you know, to get this mass from cold, you know, it's gonna take about six burns. And even this visqueen wall is still not performing well. But anyways, uh, my next build, I think, is going to be uh, a batch box. So I'm looking forward to that. And even considering revamping this one as a batch box. But that sounds like a dumb idea, don't you think? This thing works great. Um, no problems whatsoever. High winds, no blowback ever. Not for a second did I get a sense of blowback. So there you go. Uh, signing off from Beaverton, Michigan. 2019 Rocket Mass Hiller Heater Build.